Strap into today's video, we have a safety harness to fit. In this video we are going to fit the seat, safety harness and rear roll bar to the car as shown on pages 19, 20 and 21 of the build manual. Get your allen key and spanner sets ready as I hand over to Steve. So here we have the seat we've assembled and it just drops down into the centre of the car with the holes in the base of the seat lining up with this long slot in the chassis um, on both sides. I've got my fasteners prepared so I've got a, a washer on each of the bolts so if I drop that down through the seat it goes through the slot in the chassis as well and I can reach underneath and put my larger washer and nut under there and do that same process again as always just finger tight at the moment and do the same on the right hand side here now this is clearly very loose still because it will move around a lot but the idea is that we can now slide our seat backwards and forwards if you have drivers of different sizes what we advise is to set this for the tallest driver Once that's set, it, it takes too long typically at a race event to actually undo things and adjust the seat. So what you can do is actually get foam padding and put it at the back of the car or on the base of, sorry, back of the seat or on the base of the seat. And once the driver is harnessed in, then it's all secure and good to go. Now that we have our seat in the car, the next and, and really important part for the safety of the driver is our harness. Now this is what we call a four-point racing harness. And the four-point refers to the fact that there are four points on which it connects to the car. We're using these eyelets here. Two either side of the driver's lap and two that come up and over the shoulder and attach to the rear of the car, which you'll we'll see once we get to fitting that. So the way to get this installed in the car is to lay it in the seat and good tip to make sure you've got it the right way around is that the red part of the latch faces to the left. So I'm going to pass the lap belt on the right hand side through to its fixing point on the chassis over there and the same with the left hand side. Making sure that you don't get any twists in the belt because that is not a good alignment. It twists could possibly harm the driver if there's a big crash or they could actually weaken the belt. So we have now a bolt with a washer already fitted. So that's going to come down through our eyelet and through a hole in the chassis plate by this reinforcing plate here. The next bit is actually quite fiddly because what we want to do is get a washer and nut onto the bottom of this bolt where access is really restricted. So I found a nice little trick with a socket here, 17 millimeter socket, and drop the nut in and then balance the washer on top of that and it comes up through a hole in the bottom of the chassis and then you can slot it onto the bolt and hopefully get it started. There we go, so that's that side done and we repeat that on the right hand side. The next step then is the shoulder straps which Again, making sure there's no twists. That's how it should sit. The eyelet at this top end can come through the hole in the back of the seat. And we'll just dangle that down there at the moment, ready to go around the back and fix it together. So we've come around to the back of the car now to fix our shoulder straps to this, the top of the rear hoop here and the hole we're going to use is the smallest of the holes along here be in line with where the shoulder strap comes through the seat so same as we did with the lap straps bolt with washer through the eyelet and take a washer and nut onto the bottom of that bolt and then we do the same thing the other side and now we can go around and actually tighten all four of those fixings and making sure they are nice and tight while Steve tightens up those nuts and bolts, 
I thought this would be a really good opportunity to talk to you about the importance of the safety harness, both on the track and on the road. The safety harness is your last line of defence if involved in a collision. Now, when driving the car, if you think you're going to crash, the first thing you should do is try to avoid the collision. And this can be done by letting your finger off of the throttle switch and starting to apply the brake as quickly as possible to stop the car as quickly as possible. Now, even if you can't avoid the collision, this action will greatly reduce the impact because you'll be traveling at a slower speed. So it's always a good idea to try and stop the car, no matter what the situation. But if you can't avoid the collision, you are heavily reliant on the safety devices around you. The helmet, the roll bar, and most importantly, the safety harness. The safety of vehicles has improved dramatically over the years, thanks to tests like these. Sensors are placed all over the vehicle which allows the engineers to understand exactly what forces are experienced in a collision and how to better protect the passengers. The car is brought up to speed with two test dummies buckled in and... You can see how the seatbelt helps to restrain the passengers whilst the car deforms and absorbs the force of the collision. But what would have happened if they never had their seatbelt on? Let's rerun the test! Ooh, yeah, that, that, that looks nasty. With nothing to restrain the dummies, they continued to move forward at the same rate the car was travelling. That is, until something inside the car stops them, like the steering wheel. Or even the windshield. In some severe circumstances, passengers could even be thrown from the car. And as it's clear to see, you're far more likely to suffer life-changing injuries in a collision if you are not wearing your seatbelt. So, buckle up! And make sure you're strapped in before you go racing. Now, let's head back to Steve to install the next safety device. We need one further really important item to actually protect the driver, should they have an accident. That is our roll bar and roll bar roll protection system roll hoop generally all mean the same thing this structure that goes above the driver's head and actually protects them should the car turn over you'll notice on the roll bar that there are some unusually shaped cutouts for the fixings on these and i'll demonstrate the reason for those if i pop my bolt and washer through here and pop a nut on the other side now these nuts we're using now are different sort of nuts of what we've used before. They're called a serrated flange nut and the serrations on this surface help it lock in place so it doesn't come undone and the flange refers to the fact it's wider at the base than it is at the top. They, that replaces a washer for us. So I'm going to put one in the right on this side and one in from the right hand side and then demonstrate that if you're going to store your goblin over winter fully assembled for example then by slackening off the bottom fastenings on each side and just loosening these side ones what we can do is slide the roll bar back lift it up and fold it forwards and then you have a much lower structure to actually store in the school so we'll bring that back up now and slide it to its forward position that means I can then get my remaining bolts with pre-fitted washers into the holes two on each side spin a nut onto each of my bolts and then we can just tighten those up not forgetting to do the side fastening as well as those bottom ones and that is our roll bar fitted so the final part of our roll protection system roll bar as we said earlier is what we call the green power panel so this has cutouts at the bottom here that sit around the safety harness flanges and fits onto the four holes at the bottom of the roll hoop I'll just put my 
bolts through, hold those in place while I pick up another washer and nut. And then using the same tools as our roll hoop fastenings, 13mm socket and spanner, we can tighten those up. There we are, one green panel, re one green power panel fitted. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe, pretty please. Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.